Let's see, the time is now 9.05. Shall we get started? Yeah, I think we can start. Yeah. Great, so just a reminder for those who have joined, please add yourself to the, to the attendees list in the agenda. And uh, can someone post the uh, agenda link one more time just for, to just to make sure everyone has it. And with that, we have, so we, we have a, a set of recurring, uh, recurring meetings. So uh, we have a, this meeting, which occurs every Tuesday at this time. We have a NSM document meeting, which occurs every Wednesday at, this time. And we have a use case document, which happens every second, fourth, and fifth Monday uh, at, at, at this time as well. We, we are also participating in the CNCF Telecom User Group, Birds of a Feather, which happens on the first and third Monday uh, at this time as well. And Finally, there is a CNCF networking working group, which happens every two weeks at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So we have come, so we have just completed uh, Container World 2019. Oh. So, um, Prem, was there, was there anything that, uh, actually, I uh, think Prem, we spoke about that before, didn't we? Yes, that's right. That's yeah. what we can. Okay. Remove. So I'm going to remove that off the agenda. Yep. Um, interestingly, um, there's uh, at the upcoming DockerCom, uh, there's there's a person who I think is going to mention Network Service Mesh, uh, but I don't think there we we don't have anyone who's giving a proper a proper talk there. Right. I think uh, they are organizing a two to three hour session. Uh, uh, and Lee, uh, who is also running the mystery, he is basically doing that. Yeah. I, so I saw someone from mystery. I believe it is Girish. Yep. Girish. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey guys. Yeah, uh, I have joined the call. Uh, you know, uh, looks like Lee has been talking with Prem and Ed. So uh, you know, so when when you have a chance, like you know, let me know, and uh, I can actually introduce the mystery project. It's uh, it's a you know it's it's of course like you know it's very early stages but uh, but definitely like you know uh, we are trying to actually you know, take it through. Um, not sure like you know if you guys have some background but you know so when I mean as you guys go through the agenda and like you know when you guys give me a spot I can talk about it for about two or three minutes. Perfect. 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 That and that that's super easy to fit in. Um, I would actually suggest maybe we do it before the logo conversation because I expect the logo conversation to be. <laughs> Part of a time-consuming sort of way. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, moving, moving. Yeah, in. and um, is historically, especially if it's in San Francisco, uh, I'd I'd join in and, and help out uh, in in a physical presence. But um, I'm not going to. I'm currently out of town, so um, it's possible. We'll, we'll, we'll get to this though. Um, so we have KubeCon EU showing up with in Barcelona. Um, and so that is from May 21st to 23rd. We have an intro and deep dive, uh, and there is a potential LFN demo booth that we may end up doing uh, in conjunction with ODL, I believe. We have uh, on May 20th, the day before, we have a few co-located events at KubeCon uh, as well. So we have the we have talks in the FIDO Mini Summit, and we have talks in the uh, Cloud Native Network Service Day. We have uh, KubeCon China coming up as well in um, in June 25th to 26th in Shanghai, where we have a intro to main uh, intro talk in their maintainer track. Uh, we have uh, ONS Europe coming up in Antwerp with the call for paper closing in June 16th. So 
Uh, we have MEF 2019 in Los Angeles, um, and I believe there's some presence that there's that's going to be there for some part of the community. Uh, at the same, at the exact same time, we also have KubeCon North America in San Diego, where the call for papers opens up in a few days in uh, in May 6. So, if you have anything that you would uh, that you would like added to this uh, to this events list, uh, definitely definitely let us know, and we'll we'll add it in there. And with that. Um, one last thing on one last thing on the events. Um, I dropped a link both for KubeCon and also in general at the end. Um, as folks actually get things lined up for events, um, please feel free to push a PR to the site to update them, particularly on the upcoming KubeCon EU. So I know quite a few of us are looking to place, uh, you know, booth demos, talks. We've got the general talks. We've got talks at co-located events and. And so just feel free to push a PR and add whatever you're doing related to network service mesh there um, to the site. Yeah, so one of the nice things about our site is that if you add the metadata with the time and, and the date, it'll, uh, it'll order it properly in the events page and it'll migrate it to past events once it's a past event. So it's super easy to, to add something in. It's just copy over one of the templates, modify it then you're good to go. We have uh, a announcement from from Nikolai. So Nikolai, you have the floor. Yeah, it's actually uh, from uh, from the core team, let's say, from the core contributors team. Um, and I have the, 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 the honor to announce it. So uh, we had um, some discussions last week and, you know, we are now part of CNCF uh, and uh, this kind of makes the project uh, kind of is, is a sign uh, of the fact that the project is uh, is more important. Uh, uh, then, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really big thing now. So um, we had kind of a discussion with uh, Fred and Ted uh, last, uh, last week. Uh, and uh, we agreed together that uh, we would like to uh, have a person from the community promote it uh, to join us uh, with the, within the core contributors, like the guys that have uh, right access to the to the repos, uh, to the main repo of network service mesh on the site. Uh, and this person's name is Andrei Sobolev. So uh, he contributed more than 40 patches uh, lately. Uh, he's a great supporter of the stability of the CI. He helps with reviews and in general takes care of the project being uh, being stable. And we re recognize him as a, as a key, key member of the community. And we hope that with this, uh, uh, we will have um, more more stable project and we will boost the project to, to the next levels. Yeah, thank you guys. It's very nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank you. Well. Congratulations, Andre. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, more or less uh, the announcement from me. I don't know if Fred or Fred, uh, Fred or Fred had something to have something to ask, but uh, to to add, but uh, I will enable the uh, your uh, admin access uh, just after the call. So yeah, cool. And I'll I'll start trying to remember all the other places I need to add your admin access. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> that's hard. Um, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what I've sort of told Andre and Frederick, which is, in principle, yep. with, with a couple of exceptions, like places where there are credit card numbers, um, I am delighted. I want to make sure that we all, all the, the committers have equal access to the resources from a management point of view. It's just generally good policy. But I'm not sure that I remember what all those things are. So if you come across one that I haven't added you to, just let me know. Yeah, uh, so you can, can we start on a new document that uh, describes what all those things are? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty good idea. <laughs> that is a very good idea. Um, yes. Well, well, again, congratulations! Like uh, for for us, like this isn't something we ever we take uh, we we take lightly, um, and so um, like, you you definitely put in a huge amount of work, and so 
de definitely looking forward to seeing your your future contributions. Thank you. So, uh, so we have an, a network service Twitter account. So, Lisina, you have the uh, you have the floor to give mm -hmm. the update. Thank you. Since last week, uh, we've gained 42 followers. We're now at 157. And also since last week, we are following 254 more accounts than last week. So we have 623. We're following 623. And um, I'm keeping an eye on the events to post about KubeCon EU, as well as FDI Mini Summit and the LFN Cloud um, Native Services Day. I'll post about those to let everyone know where we'll be at, that, at the events. And once the release notes are ready for the Andromeda release, I will also post an announcement for that. If, if there's anything else you'd like to see, um, feel free to let me know. I'm open to suggestions. I, I do want to acknowledge two things. Number one, that's a hell of a lot of work to make that much progress in one week. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, but number two, you've also been posting like all kinds of NSM related things. Like I, I think there was a, a, a bit that, um, that Prem had done on Telecom TV that touched on NSM and you posted that. And so you just did an exceptionally good job of tracking all the things and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. You're welcome. Um, I have a question. I don't know if I should share the link here, but it was shared in the general NSM uh, channel. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, on tweet, it's about, uh, okay, let me just click here and I guess that we open. So, yeah, I mean, um, we live in a free world. Uh, everyone can have uh, his or her opinion, open, shared. So my question is how in general do we handle all the positive and, you know, uh, kind of not really positive uh, messages that are out there, especially with uh, Twitter. So I see that Fred answered here. So there's a kind of uh, small discussion going on, but uh, um, do we want to have a more, I don't know, structured approach to this or we just let it as it is? I, mean, I, I, I don't know how much of a structured approach we need. Generally speaking, I'm, I'm pretty happy as long as everyone keeps things kind. Uh, that that yep. tends to be really straightforward communication. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so uh, Dworkin is himself an interesting guy. Um, he, he, he's always fun to interact with. Um, okay, uh, it's my question was more about uh, Lucina because I help. I, I guess that uh, she, I mean, she probably. I mean, if you need some help or you think that that there's a, some messaging that we can we can you know um, send even not directly as a reply to someone else, but maybe as a kind of I don't know statement from from us as a community. As, as an indirect reply to something, I don't know. Maybe maybe you can just reach out to us and we can try to figure out. That sounds good. Yes, for the most part, this one that was brought up on the screen was one where it wasn't a simple, thanks so much, we're happy to be included in the CNCF, you know. <laughs> uh, so this one was like, um. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. You reply? <laughs> <laughs> one of the lovely things about Lucina is, is um, she's not shy. She will reach out. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And Great. My, okay. My my general policy when when it comes to these type of things is um, always always be kind. Like even the, even if the person and then and, and uh, Dee working was was not like this, but you know even if the person is extremely upset, you know they're they're angry. It's like still mm -hmm. be, be kind. You know uh, I and and so. I, I think like one of the worst things we could do is is uh, is to not be kind because that that not, not only does that not help the other person and or help us but actually destroys our our reputation as as well and so so I think uh, for me that that's the that's the primary like regardless to what form or structure that that it has you know that's that's the uh, for me, that that's paramount that, that we that we act like that. Um, when it comes to something like this, I I think that once the once the website is a little bit more structured, 
then uh, something that Lucina could help us with is trying to identify the list of very frequently asked questions. You know, and, uh, and we can point people at them just to seed the, seed the conversation. And if it's not enough for them, then we can, then we, and then we can further join in on the conversation. So, but I, I, like one thing I'm hearing over and over and over again is like, what, how, how is this different from STL? Why, why not STL? Mm -hmm. Down to the point that I, you know, that, 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 that could be the big, the, the first question that, that we could add in is like, why, why, why not STL for these use cases? Mm -hmm. No, it, it happens to be a particularly good question because Istio is great at what it does. This is just different than that. Absolutely, and and, and people are are genuinely curious. They're not they're not saying it like in a disparaging way. They're they're genuinely curious. Like why why is why is Istio not enough in the space? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. So. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> as a follow up, one other thing that I always get is uh, some of uh, people assume that I mean. It's right, and uh, they assume that this is also a service mesh similar to Istio. So I tell them that hey, this is not uh, the regular service mesh, and then explain them. Um, then people, their wow effect goes further. That's the feedback I got from people. Hey, this looks interesting, and then they sort of get into further discussion. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, should we have an somehow a write up between that explains what Istio does and what uh, NSM does, even though there are slide decks that explains it, but further. Yeah. <laughs> it might be something to refer to the documentation community for meeting tomorrow. Um, yes. Because I, I, I will be the first person to admit that a slide deck is not an answer. Um, it is, however, apparently what I'm good at. Sure. <laughs> so what I can do is I can probably uh, start a Google Doc uh, if you're okay or add it to that of our glossary and then probably you can review it during the docs call. That would be super helpful. I'll do that because I've already done the preparation for the container world and I'll probably leverage the same. Yeah. Yeah, no, having, having, having those slides out there is going to be super helpful. One of the, the things that I really enjoy is the degree to which there's a slide for almost everything out there already. Um, right. yeah. You just have to find them. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think that I, this I, is a good introduction to the next topic <laughs> if we are doing here, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry for I, I, I prefer I prefer I prefer those long dark slides that go into the swim. Anyways, um, we have the Metri project. Uh, Garish, you have the floor. Um, hey guys. Um, so um, uh, I first have to apologize for the fact that like I haven't spent much time with NSM. Um, you know, so uh, just like what Frame was mentioning, you know, so I pretty much like you know would be pointing uh, people at the same set of questions. Like you know, which you guys just made note of, uh, but definitely like you know, uh, we would be very interested to learn about it. Um, now, just to give you guys an idea of what Meshery is, so um, me and Lee uh, Lee Calcutt, like you know, have been you know uh, uh, pr pretty much like fans of Histio, and like you know, we have uh, had given uh, Istio workshops, like you know, like at four events last year. So uh, some of the most uh, common questions that kept coming up were like you know, uh, why why a service mesh? Uh, which is obviously like you know answered pretty well. Now the next question keeps coming up as to why this service mesh as to that, and like you know what's the overhead that it keeps bringing up? Like you know what are the performance? Uh, you know I mean like you know, nothing comes for free. Like people understand that very well. So there are some of the immediate questions that keep coming up are like, so uh, you know what's the overhead of uh, you know bringing in Istio? Uh, what's the overhead of bringing in Linkerd? Like you know and and they also get into some specifics. So uh, what we did was like, you know, me and Lee uh, started working on this project, like, you know, j just like, you know, a few months back. Um, and we thought it'll actually be a nice uh, community project. So we actually created this uh, meshery thing. And uh, now we also have weekly meetings. I've posted uh, a link to that. Like, you know, of course, like you, know, you guys are actually seeing at the site, like, you know, which is fantastic. So um, we have a few contributors. Now, just to give an idea of what meshery is like, so, so meshery tries to address or helps, uh, you know, or, or is trying to help um, address some of these uh, overhead concerns, like, you know, which people have been bringing up. So at the moment, like, you know, you can see uh, there's not much uh, because again, like, you know, everything is pre-alpha. Now, uh, one of the first things we did was uh, we started off with, like, you know, a simple proof of concept, like, you know, which turned out to be a monolith. And then, like, you know, we started breaking it out into, um, you know, I wouldn't call it, like, you know, a pure microservice architecture, but then, like, you know, into its own components. And we thought um, rather than having the adapters, 
um, you know, so um, I, I'm really sorry. So uh, when we started, we actually started it off as a project for Istio. And then we thought, hey, you know what, this is a sensible question that needs to be addressed across meshes. So what we did was like, you know, we thought meshery could be uh, a thing which interfaces with this concept of adapters, which again, like, you know, is, is you, you can say, I, you know, I borrowed the, the, the terminology from Istio, uh, but essentially what it is, is that meshery itself, it does not talk to any meshes, any service meshes. So what we did was we created this concept called meshery adapters. Now, the, we, we are planning to have one adapter for every type of mesh, and you can see it there, like, you know, there's one for Istio, there's one for Linkerd, Octarine is still being developed, and there is like a skeleton one for Console Connect. So essentially the plan is that, like, you know, uh, all these uh, uh, meshes will actually have adapters and meshery will actually interface with them. Now, uh, why should meshery, which is supposedly a performance tool at this point in time, like, you know, have to interface with these meshes? So to partly answer the question, is actually to, uh, essentially we have this concept of a playground in meshery where people can actually connect to these meshes through the adapters and perform operations on the mesh. So say for example, like, you know, they can actually make some changes to some configurations of Istio and like, you know, try out like, you know, some load testing tools, like, you know, to see if, you know, uh, it performs well. So, you know, as you, you can see like, you know, this is kind of like, you know, where the project is. It's, it's, I wouldn't call it beta. Like, you know, I, I would say it's pre-alpha. It's been like three months roughly, like, you know, we started this project. Um, and uh, now we try to uh, come up with this uh, weekly meeting, which is uh, at 2 p.m. Central on Fridays. Um, so if you guys are available, like, you know, please feel free to join. Uh, and also there is a Slack channel. Uh, you know, I have a link to that, like, you know, and you, you will be in the Slack channel. Um, all the code is open source, like, and everything is under the uh, layer 5 IO org on GitHub. So um, again, like, you know, right now uh, I am one of the main contributors to the project, like, you know, which is the reason why like, you know, I'm here to actually talk about it. So um, one of the things that recently happened was like, you know, uh, Lee uh, got to know about this uh, NSM uh, network service mesh and like, you know, he thought it'll be nice actually for you guys to also have an adapter there. Uh, but like I said, like, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, able, I'm not in a position to actually recommend this and that for the adapter because, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't have much of knowledge about NSM, which I, you know, I mean, after attending this call, like, you know, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to actually learn more. I mean, it's not that like, you know, I wasn't intrigued earlier. Um, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm also one of the Twitter followers of uh, NSM now. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you. I'm, I'm definitely very intrigued. <laughs> I'm, I'm very intrigued to actually know more, more about uh, NSM. Um, and uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, uh, the, the hope uh, from our, uh, from our measure project is actually that like, you know, if, uh, if you guys can actually, you know, uh, start off with an adapter for uh, NSM and, um, and, you know, get going this way, like, you know, it, it'll be great to actually have you guys part of uh, measure as well. Um, and of course, like, you know, so, sorry, go ahead. That actually sounds super cool. Really quickly, like there, there was one, I wanted to sort of point to this thing and, and Lucina brought it up. We were, we were, we're just chasing down something right now in network service mesh where, could you switch to the tab on the, yep. there, this was a related to a bug and, and Ilya had gone through and done this sort of graph of latent, setup latency for a request versus number of requests that have been made. Um, and yeah, as you can see, we, we've got a place where we're trying to figure out why something is monatomically increasing because that's not good. Um, you know, so, but would this be the kind of thing like request latency that you could see being measured with Meshery? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so, um, I mean, eventually, like, you know, we want to actually make Meshery in a way that, like, you know, it, it, it will allow you to actually perform a wide variety of tests. But today, like, I mean, like I said, like, you know, we just started, like, you know, working on this Meshery project. It's pretty new. So to start with, like, you know, we actually have a very basic load generator. But, I mean, out of the box today, uh, you will be able to actually see that. Um, we are, uh, I mean, like, you know, with respect to the technology stack, like, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, Go, you know, from Google. So uh, pretty much like, you know, all the backend uh, and the adapters at the moment are actually all written in Go, but uh, the adapters don't have to be written in Go, like, you know, because uh, you can see that the connection is uh, over gRPC. So, you know, so you are free to actually write it in any language. Um, but the main Meshery app itself is actually, again, written in Go. Uh, and for the UI, we are actually using um, uh, Next.js, which is, again, like, you know, framework on top of React. So uh, that's the technology stack. Um, and um, at the moment, like, you know, uh, we have a, a close uh, dependency on Kubernetes, like, you know, which we will eventually be moving out because for example, uh, when we spoke to uh, console folks, like, you know, they actually said that, um, you know, uh, they gave us a percentage that like, hey, you know what, like, you know, only 30%, like, you know, of the people they know are on Kubernetes. 
So the remaining 70 are not. So, you know, so which is actually a definitely like, you know, a good thing for us to consider. So uh, we will eventually be moving away from like, you know, being specific to Kubernetes. But again, um, you know, uh, the Meshery app itself does not have that binding. It's mostly the adapter. So, you know, as an adapter developer, like, you know, the person will have complete independence as to the way they want it. Uh, just that, like, you know, uh, I'll have, you know, we'll have to make some minor changes in the user interface to actually uh, remove the tight dependence on Kubernetes. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, you are free to actually try Meshery. Uh, it is functional at this point in time. Um, oh. And um, yeah, there, there is a Docker Compose file. There's a tiny script which we have created to make uh, life easier if you want to give Meshery a try. Um, so please feel free to actually give it a try. And uh, you know, we'll, we would be very happy to actually hear your feedback. That, that's, that's very cool. I mean, the thing is, I think you may have caught some of this earlier. With network service mesh, a very good first approximation is to, to imagine service mesh and then imagine that the thing you want to move is an IP packet or an Ethernet frame instead of an HTTP request. Um, that's a very good first approximation. And so my guess is with, with possibly a minor amount of generalization, this could be super good for also measuring some of these things for network service mesh. And it might even be something that could be incorporated into our CI over time because we do want to make sure that we are keeping latencies low for setup, that we're keeping packet latency through the system low, that we're you know, testing throughput through the system and so forth. Because all, all those things that are important to the people, to folks in service mesh, they're going to be just as important in their analogs to people for network service mesh. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. To, um, so to drive towards your point about not being tied to Kubernetes as well, and that actually ties in really well with our use case as well. So uh, we've de designed the system so that Kubernetes is our is our reference architecture um, at at this point, and so, but we we have uh, an integration with uh, with Open Daylight now, and we're and the API was designed in such a way that any anything that wants to uh, create a network service and wants to hook it up uh, to uh, they want to expose their their service in a in a more generic way is able to use our our APIs, and the APIs are all written with uh, Protobuf and exposed with gRPC. So it's it, it's very easy for us to to uh, to work with things that are not uh, that are not Kubernetes based. So something like this, like the fact that you thought about it not being tied directly to Kubernetes and you're looking at pulling it out uh, so it can run as a, as a standalone or in some, or in some other system uh, is, uh, is definitely, a, uh, is definitely valuable to us as well. So. Awesome. Awesome. That sounds perfect. And yeah, like, um, I mean, uh, obviously like, you know, uh, what, what you just said made sense. I mean, like, you know, to get started, yeah, you know, it's easier to base it off of something that's pretty robust as of today. But yeah, eventually oh, yes. it's good to move away. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, totally. Get that, it. That, that describes our, uh, our progression. <laughs> uh, and we're, we're very much fellow travelers with you guys in that regard. Um, so like if, if, you, if you go through our slides, we'll always be talking about the Kubernetes API server as our service registry. The truth is the fundamental thing for us is a gRPC call to a service registry. We just happen to have added that to the API server because damn, it just works. <laughs> so, <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> a couple of minor suggestions. Uh, if you haven't joined us in uh, the CNCF Slack, uh, we have two channels that you'll be interested in. So one of them is the uh, NSM channel, and there's a NSM-dev uh, channel. And so feel free to, to connect with us on, on Slack channels as well. And that's probably outside outside of uh, this call, that's probably the easiest way to, to get a hold of us where we're uh, very active in, in, in those mediums. Yeah. Awesome, and, uh, sounds good guys. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like a great suggestion. Like, you know, I, I will be joining the Slack. I'm, I'm a, you know, a Slack user myself. Like, you know, so yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I would love to join the Slack. Yeah, cool. That's so yeah, awesome. and the, and I think I think Lucina was sharing her screen. Uh, she pointed out the uh, the NSM. Uh, with the, there's the invitation. If you don't, if you're not on CNCF Slack, the invitation is on in the header of, of the uh, meeting notes. So just go through that yeah. link and you'll and you'll find it. Also, also awesome. available on the community tab on the Network Service Mesh IO website. So lots of good places to to to, to get. <laughs>
Uh, awesome. so, so come so come join us there and we will we will help you with the uh, with the details uh, or you can ask us to do it and we'll stick it on our on our agenda to to, to get to it uh, also Girish as uh, Fred was mentioning uh, if you want to know more about the adapter and the ODL feel free to ping me I'm more than happy to help you out on the information awesome that Sounds was uh, Prem yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. I feel, yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot, Brian. Cool. Yeah, and thanks a lot, Dave. Cool. So, right. sorry, go on, Ed. No, go ahead. You were about to go there. Ah, yeah. I was going to move on to the uh, to the logo. Yeah. Great. Okay, so we have. Sorry, um, before moving to the logo, I was sure. wondering, uh, uh, do we want to? I mean, this Fred, this uh, be whatever we discussed, uh, but was wondering, should we probably look at? Uh, sort of starting in hackathon what are we discussed uh, yeah but let's uh, let's get what to the hackathon i'm sorry uh, meetup yeah let's let's get to the logo first uh, sure. and uh, we and then we can we can discuss this uh, uh, afterwards definitely so what is the, the is this the latest one that we have um oh can you can you hear me okay yes great um, that's the second latest. I'll sh um, I sent another one yesterday. I think it was. Oh, so maybe. Sorry, did, I the wrong, did I see the wrong link in there? Um, it, please feel free to correct the link in the meeting minutes if you if you would. Uh, at least if oh yeah, there. sorry about that. That was um that was the second last one. I will send the link right I, now. I was I was copying and pasting quickly, and so I probably copied. Oh, it. okay. Oh no worries, no worries. Let me just grab it. Sorry, it's a it's another link. Um, Yep, or I could share it. my screen, but no, it's probably better if I just send you the link. Hold on. Yeah, just drop it in the chat, then we can get it corrected, and um, yep. that way everybody has it. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to find it in my <laughs> million things. Um, okay, got it. I have it now. Okay, so Perfect. I will put it in the chat. Ah. Okay, there it is in the chat. Um, that will be the link to the newest one. I just put oh, that okay. in last night, so some of you might not have seen it. Okay. Um, so, okay. There seems to be great affection for sort of the the three dimensional. Um, <laughs> no, people seem to like them a lot. Like we've had a lot of people talking about like um, row one column, row one column. I'm sorry, row two column two. People really like the gradient there. Uh, we had people comment on row four column one. Uh, so row four column one. People really liking the sort of heptagon inside the buckyball, um, and, and I, I think that. We also got a super interesting comment there where someone was like, yes, it would be great if we could get heptagonal faces on the, on the, the buckyball. And, and I'm sort of like thinking through my, my platonic solids going, do we have one that has heptagonal faces? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would be cool if we did, but I'm not sure. Uh, so one other thing uh, what I wanted to probably bring up is uh, uh, if the lines are thin, uh, then when we want to probably put it in different places when it's small, when it's large. Um, so not sure whether uh, they will be quite fitting it together. Um, so just wondering, should I mean, whatever we select, probably we may need to uh, increase the width of this line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely definitely think we should see them at different sizes, just yes. to get that's where it is. Right. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that most of you have better capacity um, cognitively to shrink this down to a smaller size in your head than I do. It's the, the sort of one of the very stereotypical visual processing things that I'm just terrible at. <laughs> so what, the only thing that concerns me with the, with the two-line one versus the three-line one, uh, like I think the two-line one definitely looks better. The only thing that concerns me is uh, when I talk with people and I say, when you think of network service mesh, think of it as a mesh of network services. So in other words, put like the network service in quotes. 
uh, because service mesh itself is a it has a defined meaning in a lot of people. So, uh, so the, the only thing that uh, that concerns me is uh, is that some people may get confused with uh, thinking that it's network and then open quote service mesh close quote. So. Um, so di differentiating the, in terms of the text, sorry, sorry, I might have misinterpreted completely. Should, yeah, should it... so, is, so I, I don't know, I don't know a good way to, to, to Oh, to put that. service mesh on one line, that's what you meant, right? Putting. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. That, that's my, that's my, my, my one concern is in how people parse it because uh, yeah. usually I'll tell people think of it as use like quote network service like a mesh of network services rather than a uh, service mesh that has a network in front <laughs> yeah no definitely that makes sense oh uh, yeah uses that should be really easy to fix yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is actually super helpful to have like different possible placements and fonts to look at it with all of these as well um, definitely. So uh, maybe I should, I'll do another board, obviously. And I think that I mentioned in the email thread that I you tried some other colors too. I've been just using blue and green because it's just easier to design quickly with a, with the same color. So um, maybe I'll try some other colors and I'll focus base, um, just on the, the ones that were selected, I think, in the thread so far were um, row two column one that was one of them and then row this two one. column two right those two i think and then row four column one is that correct and this one yeah so those three were the ones that i the only ones i saw selected yet but if obviously if there's any others yeah. um yeah, so I'll, so i'll just uh focus on those three and then make the lines thicker make sure that the text is as we spoke about and then try some other colors is that and then i'll make them um i'll show them at small scale as well thank you that would be super helpful so i will drop that back in the google group in about a day or two is that that works thank you that would be wonderful okay yeah, this is absolutely okay. fantastic like i'm really happy with where it's going so great, great. thanks cool. shall we put some deadline here to I mean, for us to to select, not not for you, Alex, but for us to, to <laughs> kind of converge on something because, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think we are converging, which is good, and I, I like to think about deadlines in terms of pragmatic things, if possible. And so I think what we'd really like to be able to do is have stickers at KubeCon and yeah. be able to put together quickly um, sort of a, a slide template for KubeCon that we can use with the new branding. Um, yeah. That that's much. How much time do we need for lead up to make stickers? I don't know. Yeah, a week should be <laughs> good. Okay, cool. Because it, it'd be unfortunate if we finished and did all this work and finished it up, and then it's like, okay, we're uh, we, we we missed the time it takes to print. <laughs> well, we we will order them in Barcelona. They will bring it straight yeah. to the conference. <laughs> ah, perfect. The good news is that in other Linux funding communities, I am notorious for being involved with things that come in late in terms of printing. And so I probably know exactly all the people who know exactly how late we can get away with. Um, <laughs> so I, I think we're good. And, and I, like I said, I think we're converging pretty quickly. So hopefully this time next week, we'll have something to finalize. But okay. Do keep participating in the conversation on the mailing list. Um, it, you know, from the results we've gotten, that seems to be working super well. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Next is Bart. Oh, Bram is adding things. Okay, Bart, <laughs> can you can you quickly tell us uh, about your your uh, thoughts and ideas? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, the first thing is uh, I would like to introduce myself because I'm new to the project. And uh, I'm Bart, and I'm working uh, for VMware uh, on a daily basis. I'm the part of the Kubernetes team, but uh, I have some free time, and I decided that I like the project, and I would like to be involved a little bit more. So, uh, I, so far, I tried, and I'm trying, still trying to help with CI/CD. And during this period of time, um, 
I saw that one of the things which is needed to the CII certification is the um, code style best practices. And uh, I think that especially from my expertise, after the, this initial period of time where you are doing everything fast and a lot of features, etc., it's always good to have kind of stabilization in a way of the style guide of, of, of the code. So I would like to propose to create that kind of document and I would like to be kind of, I can be the owner of it to, to moderate that kind of discussion about the code style guide of the document, which will help for example, to do proper code reviews and to point uh, the people uh, if there would be something um, maybe not easy to explain to the exactly place in the document where, uh, where are our generic rules about the code style guide. And this, this is my, my proposal so far. So uh, I'm open to suggestions and I would like to ma maybe not connect it to the, any current proper release uh, schedule, but to have it in mind to, to create it um, as a kind of separate from the release process issue. Oh, my, my yeah, oh, we see here plus some from it already. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I I don't think that there's anyone who would minus one such uh, such a proposal. My question would be: uh, Are there any um, uh, tools that can help us in that, like to 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 check these things for us? Because okay, you said that we can leverage this during the reviews. We can point out to it and say, okay. We agree that this is the, this is going to work like this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, it would be always much more helpful if there is some automation that can actually. <clears throat> so, so the pro problem is, uh, I I think that Go is very opinionated, and it is much easier to um, maybe differently. We don't have to create a document for the things which Go already solves via. Uh, go formatter or something, but there are places uh, which are not covered that much. And I'm mostly thinking uh, to put inside this document the things which can't be easily, easily automated via tools. I don't have any like a proper tools in mind right now. I'm mostly thinking about, uh, as I said, the things which are not that easy to uh, to find without, I don't know, dynamic uh, checkers, etc. Yeah, so I mean, the, the one thing I actually do tend to feel, it's good to give people guidance on code styles, but the things that, my, my experience universally is, um, things like that, which if they're not being checked by CI, they end up not actually being followed. Um, and, and so it's, it's just super, super hard to code review as a human for style guide violations. Uh, yeah, and I, I agree. And I, I think that the, 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 even the conversation about it is, is, is really valuable to have like a one place, uh, for example, GitHub issue or, or the document where we can discuss that kind of thing because I don't have a special um, kind of automation tool in mind right now, but this is a good opportunity to do a research for that, and if there will be, a, for example, places um, which we want to include in that kind of document, uh, to then find a proper tools which can help with that. Um, by the way, we already have such tool, or at least that it covers part of that. Uh, we have a Golint check in our CI, so, but uh, we just have to leverage the output of that to actually. I mean, we, 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 we definitely have done some of these and there. Go has much better tools than most things for this. And we have some things like, I mean, I'm sure all of us have been, built, beaten, by, have been beaten up by Shellcheck. It is a super pedantic uh, style guide. <laughs> um, yeah. but God bless them. They literally give you a, an enumerated error code that you can Google that will tell you exactly why it's unhappy with you. Uh, it's the best thing I've ever seen for linting in that regard ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So... 
Um, so we're definitely open to that because good consistent things. I mean, we already also run YAML Lint, which apparently I'm constitutionally incapable of getting right the first time. Um, so, I think that, that the proper approach here, okay, the proper, the suggested approach here, at least from my side, would be to just create the issue, start a spec type of doc, and let's let's move the discussion there, and then we'll see where that ends. Yeah, exactly. That was my point, and um, I would like to create a kind of issue. And this this like kind of proposal was to to hear the, the opinions, etc. Okay. Do we have any any opinions? <laughs> yeah. Let, let's let's get a proposal out there and see what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So we should probably get to the release before we run out of time. Yes, 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 yes. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So the f uh, first point here is that we all, uh, obviously missed uh, the the deadline for branching for creating the branch last week. Uh, there was some back and forth within the CI enabling, disabling parts of it. Uh, and I believe that we are kind of getting where we want to be, or at least uh, uh, we have PRs uh, lined up <laughs> to, to, to get us there. So my proposal would be to essentially branch by the end of the week and probably do the tuck next week, which will kind of move us, move our deadlines with with a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I want to get a quick sense of things um, because my my personal sense is that I would rather get a good, re a solid release out the week after KubeCon than a shaky release out the week before. Mm -hmm. um, now that that that's sort of my 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 top priority concern. That said, I would really like to get a release out before KubeCon, um, so that would be my secondary priority there. Um, does that sort of match other people's feelings and opinions? Well, I think it it would be a good PR if we manage to get it there. But uh, I totally agree with you that instead of just going and claiming a release without really being uh, sure about it. It's not, not really, <laughs> not really a good yeah. thing. Guys, probably also we could have a branch uh, for a demonstration purpose. So at least for a demonstration, uh, all is fine and working properly without somebody merging something. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that said, it would be nice to get some CIs and CI in place for some of the demonstrations as well, just so they don't get end up broken. Um, I, I, I occasionally get amused because I'll go to stand up the demo because I want to go demo to somebody and discover the demo is broken, even though all the under functionality is working beautifully because I've got the integration test to prove it. And it's just silly things like, oh, the, the fix for the namespace move, which was a really good idea, didn't quite make it into the Helm chart, that kind of stupid things. Yeah. So that's actually where Bart started. I mean, with uh, adding Helm, uh, Helm deployment into the CI to actually somehow verify and the viability of this. Yeah, Bart? Actually, with that, uh, it's almost finished, but it's uh, the, the kind of um, discussion about style guide, etc., was because I faced a few problems related to um, especially needle pointer dereferences in like a four or five places, which ma made like a uh, kind of race condition. In so so you had to specifically have an order or which kind uh, which um, uh, resource Kubernetes resources were being created. So it wasn't that easy to just create a job and, and make it tested. Uh, so that's, that's because of, the, of this, it's not finished yet, but it's like 90%, I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean that we are, we are on track there. I mean, like we are moving in that direction. We have a plan, we have someone working on it. Uh, so once this is kind of stable and uh, in, then, uh, 
but otherwise yeah i do i do agree that that, that maybe even even just having a branch where we keep things kind of stableish even without really releasing it uh, can still be still be a better approach yeah i mean it, it really comes down to what do we want for a branching model um i tend to personally really like the master is you know master is where the development happens and then you pull a throttle mm -hmm. to to do bug fixing, but the throttles aren't really going anywhere. Um, Cause that way master can mostly stay open most of the time. And you can really get the, the stable, the throttles really nice and stabilized. Uh, okay. I see what you mean. Um, then we don't need, I mean, in such model, we don't need branches. You just need tucks. Yeah, no, I mean, dropping dropping tags on things that are super stable mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with that. But the, the problem with branches is that um, for at least some period of time, you have to double yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is both super, that's both a super pain in the ass, and it's also incredibly error prone. Like, humans are just not good at it. So. Cool. Um, I do apologize, I've got to drop a few minutes early. Yeah. Um, Feel free to continue. Um, okay, I think that that that's we went kind of through the general approach for for this. I would still keep the idea of having the the branch uh, now that uh, it is gone. <laughs> uh, but okay, we'll see. Yeah, it's hard to do there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Prem, do you want to sure. use the last couple of minutes to talk about the meetup? Yeah, so um, I and Fred uh, were discussing about uh, having a meetup or getting started with a meetup. Um, so the idea is essentially we will need to probably get a list of topics and then we can have it in different regions. I'm trying to see, uh, it's too early, but I'm trying to see if uh, we can get some sponsors. Um, be it at Lumina, I'm also checking with Intel. Um, but the only thing is Intel would probably want it to be part of their uh, already existing meetup. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, uh, I just want to probably uh, talk about it or uh, and want to know your thoughts on, or the community's thoughts on this. Uh, the second thing is uh, also what I was thinking was, uh, at least if you can start exposing the APIs, uh, like an API guide, uh, wherein if someone wants to try it out, be it the CNF developers or anyone who wants to uh, do an EMS some type of thing, I was thinking it would be uh, good so that as part of the meetup, we can also make it more interactive in terms of having hands-on lab similar to what Fred does. Uh, so these are some of the thoughts I had regarding meetup. Yeah, so... Um, uh, I think in the interest of time, yes. we want a little bit of lead up time to this thing. So I think it should probably be held after, um, after You've gone? one of you. Yep, sounds good. Yep. But and just started the discussion so we can probably uh, come back and then visit it later when we do. Yeah, and and I'm I'm not expecting like a huge uh, turnout at the beginning, but I think we can, we can make it larger. And something we can do is, uh, we, we do have the option of pairing up with an existing CNCF group as well and asking if they'll, if they'll co-host it. And mm -hmm. that would drive a lot of traffic. Yep, yep. So. Can I suggest that we add this, this idea here in the list of events as a kind of to be done event? Yeah, ongoing Something that we, we, you know, Recur every time to retreat and sure. go and just see where we are. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that'll work. That'll be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I think we're okay. out of time as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Is there any last uh, set of announcements before we before we're done? Nope. Is that? Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we will see you again next week at the same time. Thank Enjoy you. your day. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.